whereabouts unknown. Yeah. Uh, was acquired by, just say it was acquired by an NYPD cop. NYPD cop. Right. Nice. I like it. Yeah. All right. Welcome to Firearms of America. Today I'm out here at Shooters in Fort Myers, Florida, about to do the review of something very, very special. And I mean, when I say very special, I really freaking mean very special. Today, check this out, guys. I have Walther P38. Yes, these guns started production in uh, 1938, 1939. Basically, this was one of the main guns in uh, semi automatic pistols and sidearms for officers in Nazi Germany. Yes, check this out. 4.9 inch barrel, eight capacity magazine, chambered in nine millimeter. Let's do some shooting. I uh, already shot it plenty of times before doing this review and I have to say it is absolutely freaking phenomenal. So uh, we got our eight capacity magazine and as you can see it is uh, nicely numbered, single stacked, very easy to load. I mean the spring here is just probably the easiest magazine that I have to load. The gun is uh, courtesy thanks to brother Mike over here for allowing me to review this, this pistol. I really wanted to review it for a very long time. So let's see how many rounds. Three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna put all eight rounds just because. And yep, eight rounds. And let's see. We got a yellow circle here in the middle, over there, more or less untouched in the center. Let's see if we can do a bullseye. Okay, got a, got a, got a, got a little bit of. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna give pass to this pistol considering that it is a uh, 1938. So <laughs> not gonna be too hard on it. Alright, you can see it, you can see it. Alright, let's do it. Oh yeah! Yeah! Got a little bit of uh, something. There you go. Tiny little bit of a jam back in the chamber. Bam! All right. So I know we had a little bit of a jams, but this is 1938 pistol, so it won't be too hard. But I want you to take a look at that group. Check out that group for a 1938 pistol. That group is better than. Modern, yes, and you can see it at the very top right here. You see the group? Basic, basic. <laughs> 1938 shoots more accurate, and I'm gonna tell you why it shoots more accurate than uh, most of the modern stuff that is out there. In fact, this was really a revolutionary handgun, I could say, because it inspired, all, um, I mean, pretty much everything that you have today on the market was inspired by this gun right here, by this uh, operation, the, the, the system. But let's start from the very beginning. Let's start with the grip. Now, this is not the original grip, but it looks exactly as the original grip, just a, a little bit of a different color. But as you can see, it's, uh, you got a plenty of space here to get a good grip on it. Now, your mag release is here at the bottom, so technically it is ambidextrous. Very easy to operate, very easy to replace the magazine. Um, we got our trigger guard over here, nothing. Overall, there is not much of an aggression on the grip, on the trigger guard or anything like that, but you don't really need a lot of it because it is very easy to handle. There is not much of the recoil on this pistol, and I'm gonna move on to explaining why. Um, as uh, you can see here, Whenever you pull the slide back, as you can see, the barrel remains stationary. So what that does is, because it's not a tilting barrel, as most of the, for example, this gun right here, let's see. 
Look at the barrel. You got the barrel movement. It's, it's not a lot of tilt here on this particular handgun, but you can still see how it tilts up. So with that, of course, of course, you are gonna have the variation in your group whenever you're shooting. Not the case here because the barrel is stationary. Also, because the slide here, as you can see, it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, way shorter than the barrel itself, there is not much mass, not much mass to it. So obviously there is less kick from the recoil. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, operation. Of course, you have your uh, external hammer over here. Now this is a single double action trigger and I'm gonna demonstrate the trigger. Uh, currently it is in the single action, as you can see. Let me double check, make sure that there's nothing, nothing. Uh, very easy to rack, by the way. So check this trigger out, the single action trigger. You have about three and a half millimeters of very, I mean, very safe, very familiar travel. You can't really confuse it. And then, check this out. Super crisp break. I mean, it's so freaking crisp. I mean, 1938, 1939 gun, unbelievable freaking trigger. I mean, you can't find triggers like this on modern guns. Look at that. So every time you're taking that shot, that's really why you have a group and it's really not me shooting, it's, it's really is the gun. Okay, so now I'm gonna demonstrate the double action. Uh, in order to put this gun in double action, you basically rack, rack the slide. Uh, obviously, you're gonna have one in the chamber. I don't have anything currently. And then you have over here, this is not just the safety, this is also the decocker. Yes, the decocker. <laughs> so that's, uh, th that was one of the things that uh, Walther developed. This is kind of, that's why you see it uh, on a lot of modern uh, Walther pistols, like for example, the PPQ, uh, I think has the decocker, the P20, P, Q22, whatever, Wolfers, they have a pretty much exactly the same system. So check this out. Once you engage the safety, ta-da, it decocks the trigger. So now your trigger is in double action. So once you, obviously you won't be able to press the trigger now because we have the safety engaged, but once you disengage the safety, now you have your trigger in double action. So you have a very safe, again, familiar travel about three and a half millimeters and then you have all of the double action happening, and then now it's the trigger is much, much heavier than it was before. Check this out because it makes all of this operation in the back with a hammer, and then the crisp break. Okay, so I'm gonna put some, some more rounds through this pistol because honestly, it's really not just, not just the fact that it's a history right here and I'm pretty sure, no, I'm not pretty sure, I, I'm sure 100%. This is definitely the oldest firearm that I have reviewed on the channel. So before that it was 1979, my revolver. Yep, so now it's the 1938 semi-automatic pistol and I freaking love it. I mean, besides little misfits and whatever. I think it was dirty. You have to, it probably yeah, is. Yeah. I'm gonna clean it up, gonna lubricate it a little bit and, and it should be operating pretty good. But the trigger is phenomenal, the slide is unbelievable. And uh, after I'm done shooting, I'm gonna talk about the sights because the sights are great. Excellent, actually, not just great, they're excellent. So, let's see. I'm gonna try to hit some of those flappy pedals in here because why not? Yeah, I think after the lubrication is gonna get much better because oh, it doesn't it, go all the way sticking. down. Yeah, it's yeah. sticking. That's why it's jamming. 
I think. Plus my ammo? Yeah. This one is a little bit, uh, it's, I think it's 124 grain, but it's yeah, not, it doesn't have a lot of punch. Right. So it doesn't cycle as, as good um, as it should. One thing before I move on to the sides though, I wanted to demonstrate really cool feature that I think <laughs> I really like personally. So, check this out. No magazine, no big deal. Like your slide back, you got your chamber over here, you drop the round in there. Aha! I love it. You hit it, you hit the bullseye. Yeah! <laughs> and the bullseye. I love it, I love this thing. Okay, so the sides. Very basic, very standard, non adjustable sides, and I mean, honestly, it kind of today, you know, sometimes I look at the guns with uh, adjustable rear sides, whatever, and I'm like, what the hell is the point of having adjustable sides? Just freaking put the sides in the factory that are nicely aligned, yeah. zeroed, and that's it. What's the point of adjusting them? So, anyway, I'm done with my renting. <laughs> Check this out. So, you have uh, your steel sides, very easy to align, uh, just your standard three post sides, very easy to align and acquire target, and as you can see, you can uh, definitely be accurate with it. Now you got your uh, mag, um, not the mag release, slide release over here, and as you can see, it is actually nicely extended. So you can, it's it's actually one hand, one hand operation. I mean, very very intuitive, very easy to kind of reach. And uh, at the very front, this is the uh, disassembly lever, whatever you want to call it. All you're doing is. You're locking the slide back, you're bringing this lever out, releasing the trigger, and then the whole assembly nicely comes out. There we go. And ta-da! And you have your gun disassembled. So, I mean, I can see how this gun back in 1938 was something that was just blowing people's minds. It's like, wow, this is genuinely the future. And I mean, as you can see, I mean, besides the slide being shorter than the barrel itself, you can see that most of the stuff that you have today on the market that is semi-automatic is pretty much thanks to P38. So let me know in the comments below, guys, what do you think about this review? What do you think about this piece of history? Uh, in my hands. If you have any requests for uh, reviews, drop them in the comments below. And uh, if you live in Southwest Florida and if you have a gun that you think uh, I'd be interested to review, and definitely hit me up and I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to talk about it. And uh, maybe I can uh, review your gun on this channel. Thank you very much guys for watching. Thank you very much brother Mike for allowing me to review your gun. Uh, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. This was Farmers from America. I'll see you guys in the next video. Very cool, bro. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, that was good. That was